Hi there, Alberto Savoia, and welcome back for lesson five in the map of success for product management. Boy, am I excited to bring you this lesson. In fact, I'm so excited I did not sleep very well last night because what I have to share with you is really, really great. Nobody has taught you this before, and so I have the privilege of being the first uh, to do this, especially in this way where I've really simplified uh, things. So the name of this lesson is Bayes' Beautiful Formula. Why is it beautiful? Well, you will see it's beautiful uh, because it's powerful, because it's simple, because it's elegant. I know it looks a little bit complicated to you right now, don't worry, I will make it so simple that a child could do it. Literally, a child could actually uh, use it. I, I, want, I was gonna say, I believe it is the most powerful and useful formula for product management that you will ever learn, but that would be expressing an opinion. And you know, I'm not a big fan of opinion, so I will tell it to you as data. I know the data from my own usage of this, from the usage of people to whom I've taught it, that this is, if not the most, definitely one of the most powerful and useful formula you will ever learn. And here's an additional bonus to motivate you to go through the, the lessons. Very, very few people know it. Why? Because I'm the only one who figured this out. I'm the only one who teaches it and definitely the only one who teaches it uh, this way. So catch on it, catch up with it now, learn it now, put it to use. You, would have a you will have a huge um, advantage. All right, so enough with the self-congratulatory and uh, raising expectations, but hopefully you will believe and understand that it is worth the hype. By the way, I did not invent this formula, so I'm not taking the credit. The credit goes to an 18th century Presbyterian reverend called Reverend Bayes, all right? I'm not gonna tell you the story, so he gets all the credit, but I want to take credit for my own formulation and explanation. So what I've done is I've taken this incredibly powerful formula. By the way, a lot of the stuff that works by magic on the internet, like Google trying to fix your typing uh, mistakes, this all runs on Bayes formula or on Bayesian network. Most of the AI depends on Bayes. So, but what I've done is, is I've taken the formula and I've customized it, and as you will see, simplified its usage so anybody who has the title of product manager or is involved in any kind of product management, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, can do it. All you need to do it, I know it looks a little bit complicated, but all you need is a calculator, right? In fact, not even a fancy calculator. You can use this cheapo calculator, seven bucks, right? Uh, because all it involves is multiplication, addition, and division. And even better, you, you're only dealing with five numbers. So I've really simplified the system with you. Now, we're gonna discuss this uh, part of the formula a little later. Let's focus on, on this, probability of success given data. This is what we want to know. We want to know how likely is our product to be successful, and the way we're going to learn that is by doing market experiments. And those experiments will produce data, our own data, not data that you get from a book or from you know, market research or focus group. This is data from actual experiments. Read my book, The Right It, where I give, tell you exactly how to collect that type of data. So let's see what this means. P of S given D. Remember, it stands for probability of success given data from experiment. Now, since I believe in saying it with numbers and I like formulas, I gave you a formula for success, a definition for success. We define success as actual result greater than or equal expected result. Pretty simple. You, I, I hope to sell at least a million of these and I sell two million success. But then I also gave you another gift, the XYZ hypothesis, which allows you to express the expected results using uh, numbers, which is the route to success. So expected result with formula you express as following, at least X percent of Y will do Z. So uh, in the case of this marker, remember I had this example, I call them the forever marker. I just made them up, right? These are markers that never dry up. You put them in water 30 minutes and they write as good as new. So my goal, if I want to develop these markers, let's say it's gonna cost me a million dollars in research and development and initial, initial production. I'm only willing to take that investment if there is a, a likelihood or a high likelihood that 
this will be successful. And how do I define success for this? Remember from a previous video, at least 20% market share. So I'm not going to bother to develop these markers unless I have evidence from experiments that it's very likely that people, 20% out of 100 people will buy these markers. Okay? So in essence, given this, when you look at P of S given D, you can translate it as follows. Success is defined at least X percent of the entire market for, uh, for this product will buy my product. But then you cannot test the entire market at once, but you do little experiment. So you take 100 people out of this gigantic market and you try to sell them this as opposed to this. This costs 10 times more, but they last forever. These uh, cost uh, 10 times less, but they only last a, 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 few, uh, a few hours. So the way of looking at this is that here we have our hoped for market hypothesis. What is our market hypothesis? That at least 20% of the people will buy my markers. And this is the actual market data. So if it's true that I expect 20% of people to buy my markers, then if I do a little experiment and I try to sell my markers to say 100 people that walk into a Home Depot trying to buy markers, this becomes my data. So what you're looking at, the hypothesis says at least X percent of Y will do Z and the market data will say, well, in reality, X of Y did Z. Now you expect the 20 people to buy three body or 57 body. We'll find out in the experiments. Okay, so this is what this gives us. This is the holy grail because, uh, you know, knowing the probability for success and drawing a line at how likely, uh, how much risk we're willing to take is pretty much the name of the game. You cannot eliminate all risk in market, right? You cannot give you a hundred percent probability of success, but you can make sure that uh, you, your, your likelihood of success is better than uh, 10%. So, in fact, I, I like and explain my, in my book I have some kind of go-no-go no go line, right? So before I invest to develop my uh, forever markets, I want to make sure that my likelihood of success is greater than 70% uh, percent, or in that uh, category. So I'm not willing to, to go to market if I have a 50-50 odds uh, or less. And this is the magic. This is what this formula will give you. So without further ado, let me clear this board, bring up the next set of slides, and let's dig in and I'll show exactly how to plug in the numbers and calculate the formula. Okay, let's go. All right, as you can see, the board has changed as if by magic. All right, so now I will explain, we explain this part of the formula, probability of success given data, and why we want this number. We wanna know how likely are we to succeed before we invest. And now let me explain this part. Okay, I will calm down. I know I'm excited about this, I really am. <clears throat> All right, so, if you, if you notice, there are only three, uh, sorry, uh, four elements in this formula. So let me explain each of those. And then, the, you know, they're combined and multiplied and divided. But just only four things that you need to understand. And then you can just do your math with a simple calculator. All right. So one of these elements is P of S. What is P of S? You remember from a previous lesson, it is the probability of success before data from experiment. And you re always also remember from a previous lesson that we initially set that number at 0.1 or 10%, meaning very unlikely. It is very unlikely that any given product will succeed. Of course, we don't like that. We think our product will succeed and maybe the data will show it, but we need to do some experiments. So the, the, the thing here you can put for P of S at the beginning will be uh, 0.1. But Remember, any of these numbers range from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. There are just five possible values because that's the most that we can deal, uh, that we can come up with since we're dealing with human beings. So plus or minus uh, 10%. What is P of F? P of F is a probability of failure before you get any data. Well, guess what? You only have two possible scenarios, market success, market failure. If the probability of market success is 10%, what do you think the probability of market failure is? I'll give you a second to think about it. Well, I hope you got 90% because that's what it is. So this number P of F is always equal to uh, one uh, minus the probability of success. All right, but don't worry about that now. Also like probability of success, probability of failure can only assume in my system one of five values, 10%, 30%, 50%, 70%, 90%. 
okay? Simple. So you have this, we figure out P of S and P of F, and then I'll show you how to plug in the formula. What about this slightly more complicated expression? P of D given S. Well, this is where the magic of Bayes' formula uh, comes in. P of D, this stands for our data, and S stands for success, right? So I even color-coded this for your convenience. So success, I always try to make it green, failure, red, and data, blue. So P of D given S means what is the probability of getting this particular set of data from our experiments if the market hypothesis is true? So, and once again, this number can only assume one of five possible values. Very unlikely, likely, uh, even odds, uh, uh, very unlikely and very likely. Anyway, I kind of, maybe I got them confused, but you get the point, right? So it can only be one of these uh, values. But what does it mean? So if you assume that the hypothesis is true, in our case, remember, 20% of people who buy markers will buy my magic uh, last forever markers. Uh, then, and my experiment shows me that I sold only three, then how likely is it that there's a demand for, market demand for 20% when I only sold 3%? So that's what this number is. And I know it sounds a little bit confusing until you start plugging in the numbers, bear with me. Now, this other value, probability of data given failure, is the flip side of this. If the market assumption, the market hypothesis is false, how likely is it that we would get this data? So if it is not the case that 20% of people will buy my markers for 50 bucks instead of the regular markers for, or for five bucks, then how likely is it that we got this result? So if this product is destined to fail, how come I tried to sell 20 and I sold 80, right? So once again, how likely is it that we get a specific result? Now, I know it's a little bit complicated, but as you start to do it, it, it will just sink in. I mean, I've been doing this for years. I don't even think uh, about it. So trust me, as you practice, this will become clearer and clearer. And one day you'll completely internalize them. It will be just like doing what is two plus two, four, no problem. All right. So and once again, this number can only assume one of our five allowed values for probabilities from very unlikely to very likely. So. So the formula says, well, here, here's the formula, right? Uh, all we need to do now, I, I don't need to read it for you. I'm gonna start plugging in numbers. So using experiments, uh, experimental data. So let's see how it works, okay? All right, so here we've run se several, ex we have several experimental scenario, right? So experiment scenario number one, our expected result is to sell 20 out of 100 markets. So that, that, this, this column remains the same, right? So we, we, we expect 20% market share. So we go into an office depot and we try to sell to 100 people who buy markers. What are the actual results? So let's assume that we go in, we try to sell our markers to 100 customers and only three buy them. Now, so let's uh, plug things into, start plugging things into the formula. First of all, let's do the easy stuff. Probability of success. By the way, you notice this part here and this part here are exactly the same, right? So you, you, you do even less work. So what is the probability of success before data from experiment? Remember, I told you it's 0 0.1. So we pick this guy here and we plug it here. And by the way, there's another one. So I'll pick up another one. So there you go. We already put in uh, some of the numbers. What is the probability of failure? Well. As I told you, it's one minus the probability of success, or it's the opposite, right? So success, probability of success is 10%, probability of failure is 90%. So there we go. Pick this guy, uh, 90, and we put it here, you see? P of F, P of F, we put nine. So this formula here is the, you know, kind of a, a, a copy of, of the one, all right? So now we put three out of six number. That was easy, right? And how, how do we pick up, uh, these numbers, this is what we know before even the experiment starts. So if you have a new product, you're doing your first experiment, you're ready to care of a three number. So you only have two new values to deal with. See, it is simple, I, I told you, I promised. It looks more complicated than it is. 
So now you need to find out what the value for, pro for the probability of data given success is. So remember, this is defined as what is the probability that we will get this data, these actual results, right, if the market hypothesis is true. So let me, um, uh, I've created these cards that, you know, for, for teaching my classes. Uh, and uh, we are going to use this to go from uh, uh, a verbal understanding to a numerical understanding. So it's five cards, remember, from very unlikely to very likely. And on the back of each, I put the value. So very likely is 0 0.9. You may want to make cards like this yourself. Uh, pause the video uh, for a few seconds, just make cards like this. So very likely, where is it? Uh, likely, inconclusive or even odd, unlikely, and very unlikely. And in the back of each card, you put the value, right? As on this formula. So very likely 0 0.9, so on and so forth. So if you want to take a minute, go ahead and do those cards. All right. If you've done them, great, because it will really help you understand. If not, maybe next time, right? These are very handy. So I'm going to, so I've run the experiments. The data comes back to me. I said, I was trying to sell, I was hoping to sell 20 out of 100 marker sets uh, of my super special forever markers, but I only sold three out of 100. Now, if it is true that my product is destined to succeed in the market, how likely is it that I would get this result, right? Now, I know this is a little tricky to think about it, but it's actually not that difficult. Because if you think, well, if I was hoping to sell 30 and I, 20 and I only sold, sold three, it's very unlikely that the product will succeed in the market. Now, remember, it doesn't mean that it will not succeed. We're leaving the door open because this number says 0 0.1, uh, right? So um, it's not, it doesn't say zero. I don't tell you there's a zero probability and plus we plug it into the formula. So we've learned that P D of S because it's very unlikely that we will get this result is equal to 0 0.1. So guess what? We get P D of S 0 0.1, all right? And we put it here and we need another one because remember the, the bottom of the formula looks the same. We put it here. All right, so here's our formula uh, so far. We only have to find out another number, probability of data given failure. This is the opposite of probability of data given success. In here, you need to ask yourself, what is the probability that we will get this data, meaning we sold three out of 100, if our product is destined for failure? Well, I would say it's very high, right? Uh, because, you know, you expected 20 people to buy, only three people bought it. That's kind of a sign of failure, right? In fact, it's a definition. So in this case, would you, hopefully you'll, you'll agree that it's very unlikely that this product will be successful. Again, very unlikely is not 100% ain't never going to happen, right? It's 90%. So you, you pick up the very unlikely card. On the back, it says 0 0.9. So what do you do? You take this number, 0 0.9 from here. You put it here, bam, you have the data that you were looking for. All right, so let's do a little math, okay? You can use your calculator. I've done this so much, so I don't use it. Although even I screw up with the numbers sometimes. So if, if the decision is important, if you're about to spend a million dollars, do it uh, mentally or on paper, but then confirm with the calculator, okay? So we have 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, that gives me 0 0.01. Uh, guess what? Remember, these two things are the same. These and these are the same. So here, uh, I also have 0 0.01. Remember, so, so, so far, we've done two multiplications. Easy. Then we do the addition plus, and what is 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.9. 0.81. So what we have is 0 0.01 divided, you add these two number, you get 0 0.82. What number do you get there? All right. You know, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you to get your calculator or, you know, get a calculator and 
I, I want you to do it yourself. Come on, do, do some of the work. So type 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.82. And I'm going to get a drink of water. And when I come back, let's see if you do it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take like 10 seconds, okay? So try, try to figure this out. Do the numbers yourself, and I'll be back in a second. Right? I hope you try to calculate it yourself, right? Remember, all you need is a cheapo calculator like this. This calculator will give you this number. So let's, I'm gonna do it for you. 0 0.01, all right? Divided 0 0.82 equals, forget the, all, the, all the numbers at the end, it's 0 0.012, all right? So let's go. 0 0.012. My, this, this is a very small number, right? So, and, but remember, I don't allow you numbers with this much precision. It just falls into the same bucket. It falls into the bucket of very unlikely. So what have we learned from this experiment is that given the market data, the likelihood of success for the magic Alberto's uh, forever market started as very unlikely and remains very unlikely. Well, are you surprised? We only sold three. We were hoping to sell 20. This experiment is not good. Okay. So I don't want to leave you with a negative experiment in mind because trust me, sometimes you're going to get results that surprise you on the positive side. So what we're going to do is reset the board and look at a second experiment. All right. So uh, I just need, need to remove these guys and I'll put them where they belong, 0 0.9 and uh, a 0 0.1 here. All right, uh, oh, put it in the wrong place here and uh, here, doesn't matter. So now we're looking at experiment number two, the second scenario. Same thing, you go into a um, office depot and you look at all the people that buy, buy the markers, you see how many of them are willing to buy your markers. Now, this time you were hoping to sell 20, right? That's your X was the hypothesis, but you sold 57. Whoopie doo. Now, believe it or not, those things sometimes happen if people really want the product. So remember, this is still our first experiment. You know, this is our scenario, not really experiment. Ignore that the previous one happened for now. So instead of getting three out of 100, you sold 57 of 100. Well, all right. So the, the initial probability of success and failure remain the same, 10% and 90%. But now we need to recalculate probability of data given success. All right. Now, again, what is the probability of given success? How likely is it? So you go to the, you go to market, right? Let me clear up my cards, right? So you do this market experiment. You were hoping to sell 20, more than 20 markers. You sold 57. Wow. Would you say that the likelihood of your hypothesis that more than 20% of people would buy your markers is, is, is very high? Absolutely. In fact, I would say very likely. So what is the value for, uh, for PD of S? Very likely, 0 0.9. So we pick 0 0.9, we put it here, and we take another 0 0.9, and we put it here, right? Uh, let's, let's look at the other part. The only missing component is the probability of data given failure. Uh, so if people say, look, Alberto, this product is going to fail. Don't, you, don't, don't spend a million dollars to develop it. Just, just keep your day job. And, but I go and, and I'm hoping to sell more than 20 and I sold them 57. How likely is it that this product will fail? Well, it's become much, much less likely. In fact, in fact if my product is destined for failure, it's very unlikely that I get a result like 57 out of 100 people buy. So the value of P, D of F is equal to 0 0.1. Remember, these cards are just so useful, especially at the beginning. 0 0.1. So we pick 0 0.1 from here. There you go. And uh, I guess I should have brought a marker. We're going to erase this the good old fashioned way. And let's do the math again. All right. So 
Now what you have, 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.09. This one at the bottom is the same, 0 0.09. So again, so far we just multiply two numbers, right? And if you have trouble, I know some people have trouble multiplying numbers that start with zero, uh, which are fractions with 0 0.9. So, you know, again, let me show you just how easy it is. You take this number of years, 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 equals 0 0.09. Hopefully it's clear enough. That's what you plug here. And this number at the bottom is the same. So you only have to do that simple calculation once, all right? Uh, now, here, just by chance, because I picked some, uh, <laughs> some examples, you have kind of the opposite. So but this number is actually the same, right? So you have 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 is like 0 0.1 times 0 0.9. So we know it's 0. 0 0.09, so what we have is 0 0.09 divided 0 0.18. Now I know what the number is, it's 0 0.5, 50%, but just to show you that there is no magic here, let's uh, let's do it together. Well, I guess like, a, okay, my, this is a solar calculator, right? So we have 0 0.09 divided 0 0.18 equal 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5, which is equal to 50%. So what happened with this experiment, we moved the likelihood of our product being successful from very unlikely to even odds, with just one experiment. Now, don't get too excited because, you know, experiments that are like 57 out of 100 when you expect to sell 20, rarely uh, rarely happen, right? So, but when they happen, you know, that's a very strong evidence, but also notice that this formula, this formula doesn't get as excited as I do, right? So, well, okay, Alberto, you're gonna sell 20, you sold 57, it doesn't mean that you're going to be the next uh, Bill Gates, you know, selling markers. However, I will give you that your likelihood of success is going to increase a little bit. But now, keep in mind, it's still not at my go-no-go -no -go line. For me, it's not good enough to have it at 50%. So what does this mean? It means that I need to do more experiments and get more results. Now, so this is, you know, for example, um, I, you know, if I do another experiment and I sell 25, it's gonna go up. If I sell 12 this next time, the number is going to go down, but we're going to cover that in the next uh, lesson. So I want to leave you, because this is already a long video. I gave you a lot to digest. I want to leave you, let's just do another experiment. Let's say we, we sold 25 out of 100, because I want to give you a feeling for how much it moves, right? So we sold 25 out of 100. Let me put this uh, back here, clear the numbers. Right, so we were hoping to sell 20, we sold 25 out of 100. Now, how likely is it that we will get the result if the product was going to be successful? It's not very likely, like the, la the last one where we kind of blew out the result. It falls into the category of likely. Flip it around, it's a 0 0.7. So here we're gonna put 0 0.7, and I'm gonna take a 0 0.7 uh, from here, all right? And let's do the opposite. What's the probability of failure if the market hypothesis is false? Well, in this particular case, I would say, well, you know, it's unlikely, you know, because this is a pretty good result. It's not very unlikely, or maybe let's just say, I don't know, it could still fail. This result is not very convincing. So you're gonna say, well, for me, this experiment is inconclusive. I'm, I'm, I'm being a hard ass here. So I say inconclusive, 0 0.5. Well, I'm also doing it so we get a variety of numbers here. So the probability of a data market, if hypothesis is false, we put it at 50-50, meaning that, yeah, I believe this is a special case, and maybe you sold them a lot because it's a novelty, but it doesn't succeed. So I put it at 0 0.5. So let's do the numbers the last time, and then I'm gonna let you go and have a, a beer or lunch or breakfast, whatever. All right, so the numbers here are 0 0.1 times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.07, 007, James Bond, this number is almost the same, so you don't even have to pull out your calculator with that. Then you put the addition, now you have 0 0.9 times 0 0.5, uh, 
Well, we know this is 0 0.45. You can check uh, my work on the calculator. And so what we have here is 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.07 plus 0 0.45. So it's 0 0.5. Two, and this one, I don't want to make a fool of myself, so I will use a calculator, you see? Even I use a calculator, 0 0.07 divided 0 0.52 equal 13%. Sorry, uh, 0.13, 0 0.13. So what's going on here? You know, the number, the probability of success has gone up a bit, but not a lot. Why? Well, because this result, the probability of success given this data, is not huge. You know, it's likely, it's not spectacular. But we also have some doubt about the data being valid for whatever uh, reason. And I will explain more of that in a future lessons if you stick with me. So here we find that this experiment is really not convincing. It moved the needle up a little bit, but it would have to do a little bit more. So in conclusion, Bayes' formula allows you for the first time, because I don't see anybody doing this in product management, to take the data from experimental results and using Bayes' theorem, you use numbers, say it with numbers, and translates market results into actual probability of success in a systematic, repeatable, defensible way that you can actually peer review, right? Because you can peer the review the data is there and you can work with your peers what the probabilities are. So everything is out in the open. There is no hand waving. There is no fuzzy data. I think it might work. I think it may not work. I hope you find this as exciting as I do. If not, please let it sink in. Come back because I can guarantee you this is the most powerful tool you can have in your product management arsenal. So with that, I bid you goodbye and I hope to see you for the next lesson. I hope I haven't scared too many of you away. Thank you. Bye-bye.